AJ Foyt called him Juan Monterey after he kicked their ass in the Indy 500 in 2000. We call him old man veteran, almost got great, God, he almost, does have great hair. Almost, that, that was like five years ago, almost. <laughs> Hell of a drive, kid. Talk about, when you were on blacks, Will's on reds, you caught him right before the last pit stop, and you're thinking, wow, you got something for him. And then you had a really good outlap, and then you held him off. He, you were three seconds up, and he caught you. And you figured he was going to give it one big bonsai? No, no. I mean, he caught me because I backed off. You know, I was just saving tires to make sure. And for the beginning of the race, I was really good, and I just abused the tires too much. So I did a better job managing the tires. And I just said, you know, we've got 10 seconds on the next guy. And so as long as I come off the corner strong, it's good. I, they told me he's on the button. I looked, he was still like two car lengths behind, and he was pretty optimistic there. But it's all good. <laughs> it was right front to left rear. That's, that's fairly optimistic. Yeah, it's okay. But, you know, I mean, we're teammates. We respect each other. So it's good. I mean, it's great for Verizon. It's great for IndyCar, for Chevy, you know, for the team. It's pretty amazing. Okay, the first time we saw you in a street race back in 99 at Long Beach, you won, and everybody was like, wow. And last year, it didn't. you didn't look like your old self on street courses. This weekend, you've looked like your old self. It Was it just the whole year of getting all that NASCAR rust off? Uh, a lot of rust off and a lot of figuring out what I wanted out of the car. You know, I, a year ago when I was testing, I was just more figuring out how to keep it on the track, not going fast. Now, over this offseason, was more, okay, what do we need to go faster? And how do we make the car faster over a long run? You know what I mean? I did most of the testing with, you know, with a lot of feel in the car, uh, focus on just race pace, and you saw it. It's pretty amazing. You think this is kind of like a nice rebirth? To, I mean, I don't care how you were great in Formula One, great in kart, go to NASCAR, to come back here and start again. I think this means about as much as any victory I've seen in a while of the way you reacted. Yeah, I was happy. I mean, as bad as I know how good I'm in street courses. And as bad as I ran last year, it was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> I'm See, honest. That, that's honest. Uh, you guys are Montana fans? Yeah, okay. Hell of a job, kid, but your son still didn't see you win a race. He's running go-karts. Yeah, it's good. He, he hasn't seen, but, you know, it means I need to win a lot more this year. We'll play him the replay. Montoya, 1-0 in 2015. Hell of a drive by the old gray-haired veteran. This thing looks like it came down to the last pit stop because you had everybody handled most of the race. Even though Montoya was stalking you, the last pit stop, you guys, were, it was a little slower than his, and that turned out to be the race. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, give credit to him for his outlap. Obviously, he did a very good outlap. Al Reds had gone off pretty bad, so inlap probably wasn't that, that special. And we lost a little bit in the pit stop, so... You know, just all those factors, um, yeah, lost us track position. Then once we lost track position, <laughs> it was going to have to be a, yeah, I saw, I saw my only chance was in the turn 10 there. And I get a little run on him each time. I thought, all right, I'm going to have to surprise him here, otherwise he's going to defend. Um, so I did. Uh, it didn't quite pull off. I almost had him, almost had him, but, you know, if I see a gap, man, I go for it. Well, he was also three seconds ahead of you, and you caught him. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I figured once he was on reds, the same as me, that, that, that I'd be able to catch him. <clears throat> but getting past is obviously another story once you're getting all that turbulent air. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I did everything I could today. Had a great restart. <laughs> Went from fourth to first. I know. <laughs> Gotta love that. Uh, so, yeah, it was good racing. Uh, and, uh, yeah, as I thought it would be, it would be a, in a team battle. But it, it's, it is, and your, your disappointment is, is, is obvious because when you're as fast as you've been all weekend and, you're, and you dominate the race, you expect to win. Yeah, being P1 in every single session and not the race is obviously a little bit disappointing, but um, that's, that's IndyCar racing, right? You can, that's all you can do. Well, Bill, good start to the season for the defending champ, Will Power. First race of the season is in the books. We're here with Robbie Miller. He couldn't start because he was stuttering like crazy. So I decided to start the interview. So here we are with Tony Canan. I finished third today. We broke the the, the Penske uh, what? Dominance. Fantastic Four. Sweep. We, we, you broke the Fantastic Four. And uh, you have television experience in Indianapolis. That's why you're better at this than I am. But seriously, hell of a good start considering it just looks like it, it looks like it, the Penske team of old. You know, like oh, they got something nobody else has got. So is it going to take a couple races? Yeah, but I think to be to be fair, um, we did a fair amount of tests in the street and in, uh, in the road courses. We haven't done a lot for the street course tire, so we knew we were going to come here a little bit behind. But uh, you watch me and Scott the next couple races. I think if you look at the, you know, we look at Nola and Barber when we went testing, he was he was pretty fast. But uh, they're in another planet here today, man. It was it was tough. You got your podium with a typical.
Little Tony Kanan move on a restart on the you went you dove on the inside. Elio went outside. And there was traffic everywhere. That was sweet. You know that's uh, that's stuff that I do. So uh, I enjoy it a lot. And I, I uh, when you don't have a fast car for the long runs, that's what you got to do. So I took I took a big risk, but obviously I was trying to keep the car in one piece because it's nowadays with the aero kits, you see how easy it is to break stuff. It's unbelievable. I mean, at least the old front wings had a little bit of strength. Yeah, but you know what? I think it's a good thing, Robin, because before we started to get too greedy and we started to hit each other and nothing would happen. Now, you have to think twice if you want to like dive bomb somebody because you're going to have to come into the pits because it's a big it's a big loss of downforce if you break one of those pieces. Just a little piece. Thank you. No worries. Oh, hey, you know what? We're professionals. We didn't even bother us that that guy walked through the shot. No, he, he only works for IndyCar. Too. He only works for He's IndyCar. Who cares? We don't care. All right, Kanan finishes third. He's stalking the championship. His little boy slept through the whole race because noise doesn't bother him. Thanks for watching Razor.com. Thanks, TK. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>